My name's Leanne Kemp. I'm the founder and CEO of Everledger, building a platform of provenance to trace diamonds from the source of the mine right the way through to the retail network. And we can reduce black markets across the world. And then there's another hat. That hat's called Tap on the Shoulder, Queensland's chief entrepreneur, the premier appointed under an honorary role, uh, leading, inspiring, guiding all of the innovators across Queensland, startups and scale-ups, creating the very best environment for us to be able to create the world that we all want to live in into the future. I'm Ashley. I'm the founder of Earth Offset, uh, one of the startups at University of Queensland's iLab Accelerator. And we're building a compost monitoring device that analyzes and optimizes your composting. So Lucas Manacroft, uh, co-founder and chief visionary officer at Crofty, we're an innovation consulting organisation. Uh, we don't just take startups and their, and their creative ideas, but we also help uh, traditional organisations um, to transform into the 21st century, finding the latest, greatest tech on the market uh, around the world uh, to help you have your competitive edge. Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm currently a student at UQ, um, at the same time uh, co-founder and CEO at Powersphere. At Powersphere we design and make an innovative wind turbine that has much better efficiency than the current ones on the market. I'm Russell, uh, I'm an engineer. I jumped off the corporate ladder to start up a venture in Tasmania, but my uh, big time shot was with uh, a company called Active Sky, uh, a Silicon Valley company, a wireless publishing and distribution company uh, that, that uh, was uh, an interesting experience. And uh, it led me into researching why it went the way it did. So I started a PhD, so now I'm a, uh, on academic staff at the University of Queensland. Hi, I'm Magella Edwards. I'm the founding CEO of Sortal. Uh, we're changing how people find photos and videos, store them and use them through an artificial intelligent personal assistant that learns about you and your workplace. Hi, I'm Ren Hyman and I'm the founder and CEO of Haystack. There are two million trees around the world that are being cut down each year just to print the paper business cards. We are helping some of the largest companies around the world move away from that wasteful practice and move them over to a digital platform that is more sustainable, more cost effective, and increases their sales and business development outcome. So I'm Caitlin Sapier. I'm the co-founder of Stash Property. Effectively, it is a CRM and mapping tool for property developers to use, which is nationwide. Nicholas Camels, co-founder of Powerwells. We're currently in the University of Queensland iLab Accelerator. We make small-scale solar systems out of electronic waste, primarily little laptop batteries. And we put that in remote communities that otherwise don't have electricity. So it's light and mobile phone charging, small intervention, big impact. How did you come up with your idea? Honestly, simply, really easy, listening to customers. I realised that what they really needed was advice and consulting around actually solving problems in their business. I honestly think yeah. that that is like 90% of like new startups and new ideas are. It's just how can we make something that's currently hard easier? Easier, 100%. So I just read a book. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been like really into sustainability and like the environment. I realised that you know, there wasn't really any compost technology. And I mean, for the potential it has to make such positive change in the world, why aren't we all composting? Like really what is preventing everyone doing it? And so just, I kind of looked in more into that problem. Technically, I guess we didn't really come up with it. We were approached by some property developers and people who trained in the property development space and they approached us and they said, oh, we've been looking for this type of solution. There are some things out there, but, you know, there's nothing that really is customized to what we want. So like, well, we can definitely give it a go. Um, and that was how it started. We so, came up with it at a startup weekend. Uh, there was someone in our group that was from a remote part of Indonesia. Yeah. They shared their story about not having access to electricity. Mm. We were in an e-waste transfer facility that does lots of innovation and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. um, we were really a product of our surroundings, and we just ran with it that weekend. Mm. Well, sometimes ideas just hit you in the face, or you watch a movie like I did, which is Leonardo DiCaprio's Blood Diamond movie, and it stuck with me for about 25 years. It wasn't until 2015 where the technologies were rising and they were converging, where it enabled me with enough maturity, yes, maturity, experience, life, and technical experience to be able to create Everledger. And as it stands today, we have over two and a half million diamonds on the platform. We're tracing those around the world, and then we extend it out further into emeralds and rubies and sapphires 
and other opaque markets that could create some of the most potentially conflicted supply chains in the future. We didn't come up with the idea. It was actually, uh, I have two younger brothers and they're the smarter brothers in the family. And we often just have chats between ourselves and it was just out of one of these chats that one thing led to another, uh, led to putting an app on the App Store, having 25,000 people downloading it, us having no idea why they did that. And we actually booked flights around the world to go and have one-on-one -on -one conversations with 80 of those people and actually ask, what are you using it for? And I think the answers from these 80 people was actually where the idea was formed. I'm actually a mother and I document the lives of my children. And um, it's occurred to me that by the time I'm 80 or 90, I'm going to have literally millions of photos to have to sort through. And now with advances in um, cloud computing and artificial intelligence, we can actually automate a lot of that manual handling. So that's how Sortal was born. I didn't come up with the idea with Active Sky. A colleague of mine, Ruben Gonzalez, did. But I joined him pretty soon after that. So I didn't really um, invent or come up with this idea myself either, my co-founder. He came up with this idea of a wind turbine that can capture wind from every direction at the same time and thus increase the efficiency of a wind turbine. Um, we were all engineering students. Um, we met in the first year and we formed um, PowerSphere and we just kept working on this idea. Oh my God, this is a great question. How are you qualified? to be an entrepreneur? I'm not. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone ever qualified? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I graduated last year. I am so unqualified. I don't know if I would say I'm qualified, but if I was to say, why am I capable to be an entrepreneur? I think it's more that I went into corporate, actually, first of all. And I guess I learned how all of those organizations worked and I think just having that perspective and then coming into a startup and I've always like done little projects and whatnot. Like I, I think like the self-teaching and the perspective of bigger orgs has potentially put me in a good position to like do things better. I went out and did it Same. without learning any school. I guess when I look back now, I wish I knew then what I knew now because I would have avoided a whole lot of uh, missteps. You have to have the balls to have a go, like to actually try your hand at entrepreneurship. And if you're really passionate about something and you have deep domain expertise in something, I think you're qualified. You know, passion is number one and grit is probably my second one. I think grit and passion would be the ones to kind of qualify you to be an entrepreneur. I never studied business or entrepreneurship. I'm an engineering student. And as I entered iLab, um, the accelerator by University of Queensland, they, the mentors and um, the people were really helpful. They kind of guide me which way to go. I think just learning the theory is not enough. You have to put it into practice and learn it for yourself because people, different people work differently. Qualification around entrepreneurship is doing something different, being someone different, um, trying to solve a world's problem, uh, which is exactly what you're doing, right? So if you take your concept around comp composting, and how you can then not just solve in your you know, region, your, your demographic, but you know, globally. And if you're talking about 20 or 30 years from now, then you're definitely qualified. All right. Do entrepreneurs act more successfully than they actually are? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fake it till you make it. <laughs> I think you have to because you have to have confidence to keep going and you have to keep believing in yourself and your idea and you're going to have so many no's. You're going to have a lot of setbacks. Like you have to find the strength within yourself to believe that you're going to be successful. Whenever you feel like you have the best day in the world and everything seems great, a much bigger problem that you've never faced before is waiting just around the corner to ruin the rest of the week for you. So mm -hmm. absolutely, there is never uh, that success doesn't happen. Uh, it really is pursued one day at a time. You don't just do it overnight. Like it takes, what, like it takes seven years to be an overnight success. So mm -hmm. anyone really acting like they're, they've just solved all the world's problems, they haven't. It's an ongoing journey and you're never gonna, you're never really Absolutely gonna be correct. there. Yeah. But yeah. I think there's like two kind of entrepreneurs that I see, like two personas that I see quite often. It's like the vulnerable entrepreneur who's just like, I'm so bad and I don't know what's going on, but like, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's refreshing, but the thing is that 
can sometimes scare off VCs. So then you've got the other persona of doing so well, like, oh, just like all this revenue, it's just crazy. Like you should get on board before, you know, the opportunity disappears and, and there's like a lot of uh, confidence and ego and potentially like, yeah, speaking a lot more about their achievements and, and about the startup and whatnot. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. So, I mean, that's, it is kind of something that you almost have to do a little bit in, yeah. especially with VCs, like you have to back yourself. I've never sort of suffered from that, but I, I know there was a period of time I have uh, experienced where I thought I was master of the universe, right? <laughs> have a lot of money in the bank and you think things are working. And, uh, and I think that's a time where people who start a venture can get a little bit seduced by the material trappings. I do perceive through media reports that people seem to focus on acting like they're really successful to mask the fact that they actually have some deficiencies. I think maybe it's an age thing or maybe it's the amount of experience you've had. Maybe that sort of um, passes, passes you by eventually. And even if you're successful financially, you get measured by so many different different uh, aspects, like how much do you contribute back to the community? What are you doing to help the other generation that has no benefit to yourself but helps uh, the next round of uh, entrepreneurial programs or whatever? I don't see myself as successful. Um, I think there's never an end to this improvement journey. I can always grow more in ter- I mean, as a person and as a founder. Personally, I don't pretend to be more successful than I actually am, and I'm, I don't even think I'm successful Successful to start with. People just kind of see what's going on in, in the media and stuff a bit. Uh, 100%. And so that's hyped up, and then they kind of yep. presume that you're doing better than you are, and they come to you and they're like, great work, all that sort of thing. Yeah. And then, like, that just amplifies that imposter syndrome. Because, like, yes. and you're like, well, that's a little slither of, like, that's what yeah. we're trying to put yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what people want to write about. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you chat to us, we'll be real, you know? Yeah, so, I definitely, yeah. like, I totally agree. I feel like the media, for sure, um, you know, just really focuses on, like, you know, the overnight success story that's actually been happening for 10 years and then um, whatever. Yeah, or just, just focusing on the successes. The amount of, like, LinkedIn articles that I read every day just makes me depressed. I'm just like... Well, I'm obviously not a very good entrepreneur. Look, these people. Oh, the fake life, yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Oh, that's not yeah. real. Have you ever stuffed up? <laughs> yes. And the second part is how do you stay motivated? <laughs> Have I ever stuffed up? That's a silly question. <laughs> the answer is yes. I stuff up all the time. Mm. Do I ever not? All the time. Oh, my God, all the yes. time. Yes. <laughs> Every day of my life I stuff up. <laughs> but it's how you bounce back, and this comes back to that grit and having resilience so um, and to be prepared to admit when you've made a mistake, oh, I didn't handle that very well. I could probably have done better. And you take every experience as a, as a learning experience. I just hope that I make more correct decisions and stuff-ups on average, but stuff-ups are unavoidable. This is the egotistic around entrepreneurship, right? So um, you, don't want, you don't want to see, be seen as a failure, mm. but actually the quicker you fail, the quicker you're going to learn, yeah. the quicker you're going to get to where you want to get to, right? And so um, there's some really good examples in, in the world, but even with my case, I've changed my business model in the last five years at least 35 times yeah. um, by listening to customers. If I hadn't listened to customers and I stuck to what I really wanted to do, and this happens with our clients all the time, we wouldn't be where we are. Yeah. It, just, it just wouldn't happen. Uh, and so you need a failure, you need to learn from that failure, and you need to get on with it. I've stuffed up on many occasions. Um, some of those so gargantuan that it's embarrassing to speak about. Others, of course, have been lived experiences uh, across the journey of being an entrepreneur. And how do I stay motivated? I stay motivated because it's eyes on the prize. It's kind of like a roller coaster. Um, everyone says that there's always the up and the down. So um, just to try to keep yourself at a steady state so anything happens to you and you just um, stay focused and focus on what you're doing. Basically, if something's happened, you move on, right? Learn from what you can, mm-hmm. and then just get on to the next thing. And I mean, you're always juggling so many things. Oh, yeah. So whenever I stuff up, it's honestly just like one of 10 things that are currently happening. In terms of staying motivated, you've got to find something that works for you that is going to keep get you up yeah. in the morning, every morning, Yeah. like despite all those setbacks. For me to stay motivated, definitely, it ne- there needs to be like a higher purpose, I suppose, for what I'm doing. But I just love people and I love like trying to make things like better, I guess. Yeah, um, definitely. With the social enterprise stuff, mm-hmm. which is, ours is like really easy to love. We really have this vision 
to make shape a better world. Mm. And so just focusing on that, I suppose, keeps you motivated. I'm a naturally half glass full sort of guy. So uh, I can't quite explain that. And I think that might be something inherent in the entrepreneurial mindset that you just see the world as opportunities to be discovered or to be created. And you just want to do that. So I stay motivated by thinking, what can I add value to here? But just helping others is just a very motivating thing for me. So when I started, I thought, okay, I want to, I want to do this and I want to see if I can do this just um, to prove myself or something. Yeah, so that's, that's the thing I still keep in mind and it still keeps me motivated. Is it worth it? <laughs> Has entrepreneurship affected your social or love life? Wow. Of course it's worth it, definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't imagine well, myself doing anything else at all. It is worth it if you've got something that really means a lot to you. You know, you see your friends going out and doing normal things and having fun. And so being able to kind of mm. stay the course and keep that level of hard work up, you, you do need to have kind of that, I suppose, inner motivation and like an yep. actual higher goal mm. for your what purpose. you're doing. Your purpose, yeah. Mm. I, th I think there's a lot of people doing startups because they just want like fame and fortune, mm. and that doesn't last at yeah. all. Like that's not gonna keep you up through all the exhaustion and through, you know, completely losing any social life. I literally uh, haven't had friends for more than five years. Oh yeah, um, with business and friends. We have associates and we like yeah. to talk to them on a business level and we like to have conversations around business, but you can't really say they're friends. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you might still have your school friends um, that you might hang out with. Like I still meet up with my school friends once a year. We go on a boys trip, but it's once a year. And it's not just your friends, so, it's your family. Yes. Like there are yep. so many sacrifices you need to make. So yep. unless you really do have that 100%. motivation. It's really hard. I'm still waiting to find out if it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it. It's a good one. It, it really is a good question. It's absolutely worth it. Um, it's one of those things, you know, it, uh, is having kids worth it, right? Because you have all of those times that you're completely frustrated, but you know, mm. overall, uh, absolutely. I think that as entrepreneurs, the important bit is to build the right habits into your imbalanced life to yeah. make sure that you eat well, you exercise, you do make mm. the time for the important things in your life. And to uh, take your family or your other significant others along with you. And I think, um, like I've got a very supportive husband, I've got children that believe in Sordor, my daughter asked me, can I buy Sordor yet? <laughs> so I think having them along on the journey with you makes it worthwhile because you're not leaving anyone behind. And when you're having a bad day, they understand why and um, you know you find your balance that way. But I've had to reclaim my weekends, um, quality family time, factor in exercise, try to eat right, try to get enough sleep. But yeah, um, it does it does affect. I don't have a social life. No, <laughs> my social life is. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure that your startup involves a lot of your friends, yeah. and then it's okay. Yeah, my social life has improved, to be honest, from yeah. being a founder. Um, my love life definitely affected. I recently became single literally because I couldn't spend enough time with my partner. And so I'm like, if I do date again, I would probably date someone who owned a business or an entrepreneur because they would get it. I love the social interaction, like at all the events. Yeah, that's There's what like I mean. Like on every night. And I actually get along actually with your friends and you get along with them. Yeah. yeah. It's weird explaining to someone new yes. that you're gonna have zero time. Yeah. And you have to like to explain that you just have to take off to Indonesia for a week or two. Mm. Like mm. that's going to happen every now mm. and then. I think it is worth it. it it's, a, it's a journey that actually never ends. Mm. I guess it does affect your life. I think it becomes your life. And this, there's a bit of talk about work-life balance. I think when you're right in the zone of uh, forming a new venture, this this thing is sort of like doesn't make any sense. There is no such thing as work or life. Yeah, it would just work. Well, yes, it does affect life a lot um, when you have a company like your close ones they even tell you like hey you haven't been home for dinner like in two weeks what have you been doing and you just say um, sorry I'll be back like next week but and then something comes up you're just like hey mom sorry I can't be back or well, um, worse still I'll be back tonight <laughs> at seven o'clock and they don't see you for three yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> even family members get really affected yeah yeah but no regrets <laughs> Being a true entrepreneur, you have to be both selfless and increasingly selfish. And with that, uh, there is often a disconnect between your 
yearnings to succeed, to fly high, to experiment, to do all of those crazy things when uh, sometimes life doesn't always work in the same rhythm of what your aspirations are. I would say I've had a patchwork quilt of social and love life. Um, and I'm looking forward to the day when I can fluff pillows. <laughs> This is a great question. <laughs> Aren't you all just broke? Is entrepreneurship even a real career? <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm absolutely broke. Yeah. <laughs> I've, um, but the thing is, I've picked up so many new skills um, being an entrepreneur that I now consult and I outsource the skills that I have to create an infinite runway. On one hand, yeah, I don't have um, savings anymore. They're all gone. But I think it's given me a lot more to keep me going perpetually, really. I'm so broke. Like, I'm still at home with mum and I feed myself through, like, event food. Mm. I've gotten, like, funding from iLab and a couple other things I've gotten. So I could pay myself. I could give myself, like, a actually a reasonable wage. But I don't want to do that because it's, it's not about the money. Am I broke? No, because I'm getting um, funding from the iLab Accelerator, so I haven't had to put any money into um, PowerSphere yet um, until it runs out, and I haven't found investment. Look, there are ups and downs. I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money. Um, uh, compared to my peak, uh, you could frame an argument I'm comparatively broke. Uh, I don't think of myself as broke, though, because you can always make more mm -hmm. opportunity, make, yep. and if money is important to you. Are you broke? Um, no. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not broke. I have a house, so, you know, things are going all right. Um, I mean, the, there's definitely, like, when you do entrepreneurship, it's about, like, that future upside. Like, you are going to be poor, for sure. Um, but you find ways to make money. I mean, like, I do a nice. lot of random side things to, like, bring in cash um, so that I can reinvest in the business. So, no, they're not. That's I mean, yeah. definitely you're poor and you're a little bit broke, but... It's about that, like, choice, exponential yeah, thing. You're yeah, like, it's by choice, yeah. You're not, like, broke because you don't have earning potential. Yes, you are, or you're in a lot of debt, um, but your perception to the world is you're not. But you're not going to be broke forever. It, you, know, you will start getting an income, you will start getting a wage. Yeah. Uh, it might be three, five years in, but it will happen. I don't even think of it as a career. I think you're, um... Yeah, I agree. Just doing things. Just doing stuff, yeah, doing like, projects. Like, my career is still town planning. So, yeah, entrepreneurship as a career, I'm sure it is. I mean, people go from start startup and... Well, what is a career, well. like? I'll tell you, it's, yeah. Is it? It's just your work life, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know, and you progress in it, maybe, I don't know. It is a real career, for sure, because it gives you multiple careers at the end of it. Like, even if your startup fails, I think you would have picked up any number of things that you could then take forward into a different career. So I think it's it's a thing that can morph you for the better, really. Absolutely. Wouldn't do anything else. No, I couldn't, couldn't work for the man anymore. <laughs> <laughs> career is a purpose and it needs to drive you to what you want to achieve in life, right? And so people might want to become an accountant because that's what they want to do. But that's just to fulfill a purpose within themselves to give them a goal to go and get. So what is a career and do we need to just have a career in our life or can we have other forms of this conversation yeah. it to does depend push on what, you forward. It does depend on what you define as a career. Like, there are some mm. people who, yeah, they've mm. got other motivators in life, like, outside what they need to get an income to survive. And that's, like, totally fine as well. But if you have, like, if your reasons for existence, I guess, are related to, like, your job, then, yeah, it is definitely a real career. I think it is a, a way of approaching your career, uh, how you think about opportunities, volatility, complexity, you know, it's called VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, how you navigate those things. And that's, I think, what the attraction is to studying entrepreneurship. Yeah. Why are people like you and I different to other people? And mm. it's just taking that sense of opportunity, making the best of it. So uh, I think it does, it, it impacts your career, choices. Mm -hmm. You put all your time and energy into um, starting up a company and that's your career and like people who don't understand this, like it might not seem like um, we're working on anything meaningful, like we're just playing or wasting our time. But um, like if I find meaning in that, and I'm sure you did, um, like if we find meaning in that, then it's a good career. Final one. Final one. <sighs> Are you successful? Do you think you're doing a good job? 
I, I think mm. success is yeah, loving what you do. Mm. And um, so quality of life is good. Yeah. Like so, yeah, quality of life is is really good. Um, love what I'm doing. Everything kind of like plays off each other. Yeah. It works well. So um, like happy. Yeah, I mean, like in my mind, I am successful. Like I just love the journey. So I'm sure you'll see my name in some crazy articles in like five or ten years. Um, but right now, I feel successful, and you know. It's, but it's always going to be a journey. I think I'm doing a, an adequate job passing that on to people that can learn from the experience I've had. How I measure success is not really how much money I have, how much the company is worth. I think success is whether you've achieved your initial goal. My initial goal was to um, grow myself as a person and a founder and also um, make an impact on other people's lives and help the, reshape the way we use renewable energy. And I'm on the path to achieve that, but not there yet. I think I'm, I haven't, I definitely haven't failed yet. So not successful, but not, not a failure yet. You know, you should be defining what your own success criteria is. Like a lot of people, a successful person, you know, they've achieved this and this and this, but that's someone else's success criteria. That's not what you mm. should define for yourself. Like for mm. me, am I working as hard as I can to achieve like my inner goal? <laughs> then if that's the case, then yeah, I feel like I'm pretty successful in where I've gotten to. And I know I still have a lot more to do. You're successful because you took the first step in starting, which is the hardest thing for most people. Um, I wouldn't see myself as successful, but my perception in the market and to everyone else out there sees me as really successful. But I don't because I haven't achieved my goal. Right. And so I guess when I achieve my goal, which I never will because my goal is always moving, then I'll see myself as being successful. I find myself the, an academic now, which is something I never foresaw even you know a year and a half ago. So it's for me that is bringing a, a, a layer of success that I never foresaw. And success I measure in terms of the impact you have on others because while I've got some ventures in the pipeline, meeting you and, and meeting the people just in this ecosystem, let alone all the others around the world, uh, uh, it's just really exciting. And then to my challenge, I think, is to add value to that, whether I'm a, a direct player myself as a founder or whether I'm financing founders. Uh, that's the space I'm in. Uh, if I can invest, I will. Uh, so... Um, that, for me, is a, a, an outcome of the success I've had. It depends on what your metrics for success are, I think. Like, am I successful because I'm still going? I'm making progress. My family's still happy and healthy. Yeah, I'm successful. I don't think my startup is successful yet. And we picked up grants and awards and, and that sort of thing. But I'll be really happy when I actually have proper traction that's earning good monthly revenue. I think that's probably the next milestone I want to get to. I think this a startup is successful every day it's running and every day you are still passionate and happy about what you're doing mm. and if your startup is impacting you know the so society and your customers in a positive way then every new customer uh, is something that you know you should celebrate and feel successful about and the only thing is an entrepreneur, I think, ingrained in us is that we, we are like, oh, I'm only doing 1%. There is still 99% to go, so I'm not yet successful. But actually celebrating these successes along the way because, yeah. the, you know, getting all the way to the end doesn't go with the daily fights of one percentage point at a time and one customer at a time and one interaction at a time. Success is very difficult to be able to pinpoint down into one or two reasons as to why you would say you're successful. I'd say I'm a lot better person through the journey of entrepreneurship. I understand myself in a far deeper way than I ever have before. And I become increasingly balanced. Uh, and I'm also pretty introspective. I spend a fair bit of time thinking, dreaming, even singing out how I want the world to be. So I think in terms of success, I feel more whole as a person than ever before. I can always be doing better for sure. Um, but I think considering everything, like, I'm doing all right. You know what? I'm juggling a lot of stuff, and I'm doing it, so I think I am. I, like, I try and pat myself on the back every now and then. I'm like, you're doing a good job. Keep going. Do you think you're doing a good job? You pat yourself on enough. the back? Like, oh. like, I always want to do more, but that's fine. Yeah. We're doing pretty good. I can always do better, and there's always room for improvement, but um, for my ability and my <laughs> time, I think doing a reasonable job. Do I think I'm doing a good job? I guess that's really best answered for those 
that sit uh, beside me in leadership and I guess our customers, if they think that we're doing a good job, then I guess they continue to buy the products that we build and we're providing for solutions to the challenges that are in front of them. You know, Haystack is, is now saving 50,000 trees a year already. Uh, we are on our march to save the whole 2 million trees mm. that are being cut down each year. So, you know, we are, we're getting there. And I, I think that um, I'm very proud of how our AI performs in Sordal. And I think if that's working the way it should and it's helping people and it's learning and it's um, providing benefit to the user, then I think we're, I'm doing a good job. Yeah, because that's what I set out to do.